Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Billy Keels, the host of the Going Long Podcast. Freedom. Every week I'm going to be here interviewing the absolute best in the business as it relates to real asset investing, as well as real Main Street investors. We're going to be having conversations where you can listen in and that's going to help you to continue on your path to education so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident in investing long distance. So make sure that you, uh, that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you're liking it as well because that way you can get every single episode as soon as it comes out. And by the way, don't forget to leave today's episode a five-star review. Let's go ahead and listen to today's conversation. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast, where we're back once again to continue to help to educate you so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident investing beyond your backyard. I'm your host, Billy Keels. And if you've ever wanted to know how having someone on your team that has a knack for finding things like even lost earrings, how that person can be a powerful benefit for foreign investors that are interested in investing in the United States, then guess what? This is the conversation that you're gonna to wanna to listen to until the very last word, I promise, because today's guest not only is originally from Brooklyn, New York, he currently lives somewhere else, and I'm gonna let him talk about that, but I'm super excited about it. He's also committed to providing the best professional services and solutions for your tax issues. He's the managing partner of the US Tax Department at VBIR, he'll tell us what that's all about, and he's most importantly, he's the founder and the CEO of Kastner Tax Solutions. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to today's conversation, Mr. Kenneth Kastner. What's up, Kenneth? How you doing, man? All right. I'm doing great, Billy. Super pumped like you are. Oh, man. I'm super excited. I, I mean, it's great to be able to pick back up uh, on a conversation that we started many months ago. And, uh, and now you're here and you're going to be sharing all of your knowledge with so many different people. And as we talk about them here on the Going Long podcast, as you know, we really want people to feel comfortable and confident investing beyond their backyard. And that's really your sweet spot, especially those people that are living outside of the United States, as well as people that are in the United States that are interested in understanding more about U.S.-based real assets and a lot of the different uh, tax things that are happening. And I just want to make this as an overarching statement, just for everyone that's listening to today's conversation. Kenneth and I are going to share some ideas today. He is a tax professional, but we are sharing ideas. We are not giving any kind of advice to anybody. So I think just before we even get in the conversation, uh, just to set the stage, Kenneth, because I, I mean, I love talking to tax professionals. Uh, you guys are awesome. And I just want the Go Along family to understand that. So without me saying anything else, Kenneth, really quickly, you know, we like to ask everybody here, or at least I do, the same five questions. Going to start with two in the middle, two in the beginning, three at the end, and then you and I are going to talk in the middle. So the first thing that everybody wants to know is, and your question is a little bit different today, but where do you live? I live in a city called Beit Shemesh, which is in Israel, um, very far away from where I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, like you mentioned. Um, and uh, I've been here for the last 25 years. Um, and nevertheless, i um, doing U.S. tax stuff, but for people living outside of the U.S. I love that, Kenneth. And that's why so many people are going to resonate just like me. I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, and I've been over here in Europe now for the last 20 years be by choice. And so uh, very similar thing and also helping people to understand more about the U.S. about the U.S. real asset market. So awesome. So thank you for sharing that. Then the other thing is help us understand with some positivity, right? What's the most positive thing that's happened to you in the last 24 hours? All right, cool. Well, Yesterday, my kid's school had a parent-teacher meeting day, you know, conferences, and I was really fortunate to hear so many wonderful things about my kids from all the various teachers uh, in the school. So that's definitely the highlight of the last 24 hours. Oh, no, no question about it. Yeah, just uh, you love being able to get that positive feedback around about the kids. It also helps you just to know that hey, look, sometimes all the things that we're doing, they're working, they're working. And so uh, thanks for sharing that with us. It's uh, fantastic to hear that. So. Thing is, Kenneth, I've given a couple of very, very high level things about your story. It, it would be impossible for me to do that kind of at the opening pitch and stuff like that. But I'm sure that people really want to understand, like, what's this whole earrings thing about? So if you could do us a favor, if you could actually just share your backstory in your own words, help us get a chance to get to know you more. And then if you could highlight maybe along the way, Kenneth, some of the different decisions that you've made and, and what has helped you to get to this point in your journey as a, as a tax professional, please. Okay, well, everybody always asks me, you know, how did you get into this, right? How did you become a CPA or a tax accountant? Why are you doing this? Um, so, like you mentioned, I, I always had like this uh, knack for for detail, and you know, small small details that people don't have any any uh, 
they don't have patience for it. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. and I think that's something that, you know, it's a little bit different for me. I'll, I'll look for a lost earring until I find it, you know, I won't stop, you know, after, you know, people give up after one minute, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, you know, somebody sends a, a wedding invitation. Um, I'll, I'll be looking for spelling mistakes. You know, it's just automatically, that's what I do. Um, so I guess it was kind of like a natural, uh, natural move to fall into this, uh, into this place. Uh, you know, I finished college over 10 years ago, got my CPA actually here in Israel. Um, and then, uh, you know, doing all the regular things, you're working in big accounting firms, small accounting firms, the biggest in the world, also EY. And, um, um, then I got, you know, from audits into tax and then international tax. And then I found my way to U.S. taxes. And for the last seven or eight years, I've been hyper-focused on U.S. taxes. Um, and uh, specifically for uh, foreign people who invest in U.S. real assets, real estate. Um, and not just in Israel. You know, I work with uh, with with people all over the world. That's what I have the the CastnerTaxSolutions.com website is um, is to be able to to help people wherever they are um, in in the world. So yeah, you know, I work with people in Australia and in China. You know, not not yet actually people in in Spain. I, I did not yet uh, have any uh, clients from Spanish people, but I'm open to that as well. Of course, you are. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Don't worry. Don't worry. Thanks for highlighting that. <laughs> for sure. Um, uh, yeah. And, uh, and about, um, about, uh, a year ago or half a year ago, I joined, um, VBIR. Um, uh, previously I was, uh, managing the tax department in, uh, GTS, uh, which I helped uh, build over the course of, you know, five, six, seven years. And then they were bought out by a bigger company. And at that point, I uh, I moved out to to VBIR now um, directing the tax over there, um, so I definitely help you know a lot of the locals, the Israelis, but not only. All right, man. So this sounds fantastic. So you kind of had this knack for detail. You were figuring things out. You liked in the, when, one of the words that comes to mind is persistence. So when you just continue to look for those earrings and you find them, and when people give up which is, especially when you talk about a lot of detail and really being able to understand that as it relates to your numbers and, uh, and the, the amount of uh, money that not only you are making, but you are more importantly keeping, which is one of the things that we love to be able to talk about here on the, uh, on the Go Along podcast. And so just to set the scene as well, Kenneth, I think it's really important because you, you and I, when we talk about foreigners, um, I think that you and I know what we mean, but can you clearly define when you say that you're working with foreigners what that means in your context, because I think that's going to help us to sit the um, to to kind of set the uh, set the table. Sure. When I talk about foreigners, I'm referring to anybody who lives outside of the United States. Okay. Usually, it's also going to be somebody who's not a U.S. citizen. Okay. That's a kind of like a different category. U.S. citizens, expats that that moved away uh, from the U.S., but they're still citizens and they have to file in the U.S. You know the worldwide income, no matter where they are. But I'm talking about people who are not citizens of the U.S., totally um, random people from anywhere in the world that decided for whatever reason they want to invest in the U.S. in real estate. And because of that investment, they have um, U.S. tax filing obligations, um, usually. Sometimes not, but usually they do. And that's where I come in to, uh, to help make sure that they're in compliance, make sure that they're not um, paying double taxation because, uh, you know, I guess we'll talk about double taxation. It's a big, uh, it's a big issue. I mean, maybe we'll start with that. We have, um, yeah, you know, what? even before we go there. So, and that's definitely one of the things that we're going to talk about because it, it's huge. And, and, um, I just want to make sure that we are crystal clear. So, cause there's, especially for those of us that are living outside of the United States. I mean, you and I, we both talked about, and you can, there are things that you can do with citizenship and change it and all that kind of stuff. But just as a basic premise is if you have the U S passport, you are a citizen typically, right? I'm not typically, just, I'm not, yes. typically I'm just simplifying it. Yes. And then if you are actually residing in the United States, you are a, 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 a resident citizen. And so if you are someone who is, is a citizen, but living outside of the United States, you can be a citizen who is residing abroad. What you're talking about, and when we talk about foreigners, it is someone who is not a U.S. citizen and someone who is not currently residing in the United States. Is that correct? That is correct. 
Perfect. Uh, just one one term that you mentioned: uh, people who are not citizens but living in the U.S. They're not uh, considered um, citizens; they're considered residents or uh, you know uh, resident aliens. Um, in, yeah. in you know the proper term, they're not necessarily citizens. Um, that's just you know. Yep. No, the technical, love it. legal. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Terms. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. That's exactly what you're doing here. You're helping to educate us. And that's what we're here. We want people to feel comfortable and confident and we're educating them so that they want to be, you know, be able to do things beyond their backyard. So great. So we have that kind of as a, as a base level foundation. So we, we have the, the different, what we're talking about is someone who is a foreigner. And, and so in this context, like, like you yourself went down a certain path. Like you mentioned before, you started in audit and then you went to tax and you went to international tax and then you went to U.S. tax and then you were really focused on working with foreigners that are interested in U.S. investing. So maybe you could also help us now and just help us understand like when you went down this path, there was obviously a reason because you were looking to help people, help to serve people in a certain way, shape or form. But what was it about your initial training and then what you started seeing that really made you want to serve this particular individual who is someone who's foreign who's interested in the u.s market well we found um at at around that time when i was you know in in uh, in ey and um around that time there were two senior managers at ey that decided to open up their own firm um, that's what I mentioned before, GTS, a small firm that eventually grew and, and, and was sold out. And, um, and they, they, they wanted to bring me in, um, to that, you know, that new, you know, startup and, uh, and, you know, coming from, you know, the biggest firm in the world to the smallest firm in the world, I had to be really convinced. Um, so, uh, they were, they were able to convince me. So I, I think the, the main, the main, the main thing was they, they saw that there was a lot of, um, a lot of demand for, um, well, at the time it was Israelis um, who um, who were investing in the U.S. and they didn't they didn't they didn't they didn't have a proper um, uh, solution, especially because of the um, the language. Also, um, they you know they were working with with accountants that were in the U.S. and everything was in English and. Um, and they, they they wanted somebody local, not just uh, not just because the language, but also the time zone, also the you know the proximity, and um, and there weren't enough people at the time that were that were focused on that. Um, so that was that was really a, a niche and a need that we saw um, for for the Israelis at the time, people who wanted to invest in the U.S. but they didn't have the English, and um, and they wanted somebody local who could speak their language, um, in 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 every possible way. Yeah. And so this is one, one of the things that we, we talk about a lot here. And this is really, this is once again, as, you, as you're going out as an entrepreneur and a business owner, you're really looking for where the needs in a specific marketplace and you want to be able to serve those individuals that are looking to solve a problem. And so we, we always talk about the, what's your personal philosophy in terms of where you want to invest and why you want to invest and what are the benefits that you're looking to receive. And then at the same time, you need to go then go to a certain location where you can find those benefits. And then once you get to that location, it's about building the team. And there are certain things about the team that they want to be able to understand either a location or a specific dynamic or a specific area like tax. Because when you have that person on your team that is actually speaking your language, that understands what you want and it can help you to get the, the benefit that you are looking for, well, this is just another example, right? And, and so this is where you are actually helping to fit into the overall philosophy because then when they want to purchase a, a multifamily building through a syndication or if they want to just purchase single family residences or they want to buy a business or they want to do whatever it is, you're there to help them with those specific opportunities. So it's just, I, I wanted to frame that so that our entire Going Long family understands it's the exact same thing. And as the team member, this is where you're playing a critical role and especially as it relates to uh, the tax part. So so, so let's c continue that journey then, uh, Kenneth, as it relates to, to the tax. And now you've gone down your path and you've understood that this is an area that you, a, a market need. And so you're looking to serve that need. And so what is it that you're finding that, that you're, foreign investors are really looking for in terms of the U.S. market? Like, why are they looking at the U.S. market versus wherever they live? You mentioned China, you mentioned Australia, you mentioned uh, Israel. 
That's that's really a good question. I'm not sure if I'm if I'm really um, equipped to, to even answer that question because um, you know they come to me after they already invested. I don't I don't, um, I don't um, pretend to be um, an investment advisor um, or to, you know to to direct them where to invest necessarily. Um, you know, I help them with the tax side. I'm, I'm even, I don't know if I'm embarrassed to say that I don't, uh, have any personal investments myself in real estate. That's probably the downfall of, um, of, 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 uh, the fact that I'm so detail oriented that, you know, I'm in this industry for such a long time and I'm just waiting to learn more and more in order to be confident enough that I know where I'm, <laughs> where I want to invest and what I want to do. So, um, so my, my, you know, um, advantages are also, you know, sometimes disadvantages. Um, actually, you know, what? let's pick up on that. Cause I think this is really interesting because in, in that knowing working with tax professionals, tax strategists, and then understanding the different layers within tax, like one of the things that you mentioned, so you have those individuals that are coming to you and they're coming to you after the fact, that's probably how you're meeting most of them. But just in terms of being able to best serve someone from a tax strategy perspective, I'm assuming and, and confirm this for me, please, in the, in the go along family that your preference is that you meet someone before they make the purchase versus after making the purchase. Oh, for sure. Okay. For sure. That's 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 one of the things we're trying to uh, we're trying to bring awareness to, um, and, you know, in, in everything I do. And, you know, when I'm, you know, on podcasts or, you know, posting on LinkedIn um, to to encourage people to come and speak to me before they invest and not after the fact, because. Uh, many times they come and uh, they realize, you know, they would have done things differently had they spoken to a tax advisor before. And it just wasn't for some reason on their radar. It's just, you know, okay, I have some money here. You know, they see an advertisement, somebody, you know, doing a syndication or whatever. And they say, you know, okay, what, whatever. Um, so I, th I think that's also one of the reasons um, why I didn't invest yet, because there are so many good people out there that, that offer investments. But I don't know, they're, they're also... I, I've seen a lot of a lot of scams and a lot of uh, negative things also. Um, so you know, it's it's really important to be to be careful who you who you trust and who you put your money with. Um, and um, and definitely from the tax side, whoever is listening to this, definitely think about the taxes before you invest, um, because it's not just the taxes, but also about the tax structure. Um, you know, if you want to invest as an individual or to open up a, some sort of an entity to invest with. That's something that's uh, difficult to do after the fact. Perfect. So, and, and appreciate you doing that. And so one of the w reasons for asking that question is uh, r number one, just to be very clear, it's, it's best to engage a tax strategist before making your purchase, because then you can actually look at the different scenarios. What are some of the different exit plans that you can have? What are some of the different impacts are going to have on you uh, or your entity or whatever the case may be. And at the same time, so many people do it after the fact. So one of the things that Kenneth, you and I are talking about is that we want to be able to help people in advance so that they can have the best tax optimized strategies when they're looking to purchase a, it's any type of an asset, which brings right. me back to another thing. So, cause I want to kind of smash some of these uh, just and we're, once again, everybody, we're, we're not giving any advice here. We're just sharing stories, sharing ideas. But one of the things that I used to hear all the time, and I still hear it, and I'm sure you hear it all the time, is, hey, look, man, I'm not, I'm a foreigner. I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm not a U.S. resident. I'm not a resident alien. None of these, none of these things. So I've always been told that I can't invest in the U.S. because it's impossible. Is that correct? Is that accurate? No, of course not. And obviously, you know the answer uh, to that. And, you know, we wouldn't be here if, if, uh, if that was the answer. Right. Um, and so, and so, what, so what are some of the different ways that someone who is a foreigner could, could think about uh, potentially investing in U.S. in, in real, real estate or real assets? Okay. Well, there, there are definitely a lot of different ways that, uh, that I've seen. And um, just connecting that to the previous topic, I think that, um, that, that even though it's important, obviously, to, to think about the taxes before you invest, um, I think it's not a problem to go around and looking around to different people who you want to invest with and different types of things, uh, even before you speak to the tax person, but before you sign the dotted line or before you get close to, to making that actual investment, then at that point, you know, come to the tax, uh, tax guy with, you know, with all these different options that you have and, you know, discuss what the implications are. Uh, because, you know, coming to me before you even know what's out there, um, and you haven't spoken yet to the investment advisors, 
Um, you know, there's, there's, there's just, you know, so much I can tell you in terms of, you know, general education about how the tax system works. Um, but if you have something that's a little more specific, then it could be a lot more efficient. Um, so getting back to, to your specific question there, uh, a lot of people that are, that don't want to travel to the U S um, essentially they, most of them go into, you know, partnerships and syndications, you know, big groups of uh, foreign people who, um, who together invest in the U.S. through an LLC that is operated by someone in the U.S. and there's there's a there's a foreign representative that uh, you know that gathers the, uh, the the groups of the investors, um, and that's that's probably the most common way that um, that most of the foreigners that I've seen um, invest, and that kind of structure is relatively. <laughs> relatively simplistic okay you know they they get in a partnership so they'll get something called a k1 based on that k1 we prepare a tax return and um and and then you know that's that's pretty much it um but if you know somebody wants to be a little more involved and you know and um you know go out there you know with a with a few friends or um or uh or or not not going into the partnership but you know they want to have a house you know on their name you know, say I, you know, I own a house in 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 the U.S. and you know, collect rental income and go through that whole uh, headache. Uh, sometimes it's a headache, and sometimes uh, it's not. But there, you know, the different implications, different things you got to know. Um, but that's definitely another option. Um, I'm sure you know you'd want to know if uh, if you can invest without having a U.S. bank account, and the answer is also yes. You don't have to have a U.S. bank account. In order to invest, you could send the money straight from your foreign account. Um, sometimes there are instances where it's easier or uh, better to have a U.S. bank account. And then um, in those situations, um, there are ways to to obtain uh, U.S. bank accounts. Usually you have to go in physically to the U.S., but even if you're not physically in the U.S., um, there are uh, sometimes ways around that, especially if uh, you're not doing it as an individual, if you're doing it as, you know, as an entity and, you know, you sign off papers to somebody that you trust in the U.S. and they could be a representative and, um, and open up a bank account on behalf of your entity. Um, but like I said, it's not always necessary. Yeah. So, so let me, let, let's st- stop there just for a second. Cause I want to make sure that people are following. Cause, cause sometimes we, 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 People can hear and they go, okay, well, well, no, it's not even necessarily going too fast, but just so that people will will just take a a break here. So basically, like you talked about before, like, so let's say there's probably 10 or 15, 20 people that live in the same country, whatever country you want it to be. And we put all of our money together and then we're going to invest with someone who is in the first scenario. Was that person actually living in the United States that is a representative of us, of the group of 20 people? Or was that person one of the 20 people that was living outside of the United States as a foreigner? It's interesting. The the people that formed the 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 LLC, the partnership, um, in in an LLC, you don't have to have a general partner. Everybody can be a limited partner, and everybody can be a foreign partner also. So, all of the partners of this LLC could be foreign people, and you know, limited partners. And the operators or the partners in the U.S. could either be also a partner in that LLC. Um, or they can be an out, outside manager managing the the LLC and acquiring assets and doing whatever um, for the LLC. Um, so it definitely can go in many different ways. Okay, perfect. And that, and that helps us to also to understand something. And like I said, once again, I'm going to repeat it again that we're because we're talking about ideas and we're talking about some of the things that Kenneth's talking about now are really more legal structures. And although we're talking about legal structures, his focus is really on the tax implication of having these types of legal structures, right? So just so that also is is, is very clear in everybody's mind. So th- there are a couple of things. So we've smashed the myth. So you can be a non-U.S. Uh, citizen, a non-U.S. resident, and still invest in the United States. Everybody's situation is different, and this is why it's important to speak to a tax professional, speak to a legal professional, so that actually someone like Kenneth can sit down with you and really help you with your specific plan. So that, I think that's the first thing. But then there are a couple of other things for those of us that are living outside of the United States, many of us, uh, many people who are foreigners. There are some other myths that I would like for you just to either 
well, we'll, we'll just talk about some of the things. So one of the things that you mentioned in the very beginning is that you are going to, um, well, we'll keep going down this path. So we'll, you're investing in something, you're not a U.S. citizen, you're not a U.S. resident, and there's this thing that's called withholding tax. Like what is withholding all about and why is that something that is potentially important for someone who is thinking about investing in the U.S. as a foreigner and how that could, re how, well, what, what is what is withholding and what is that, how would that potentially affect their returns? The way it affects it is uh, essentially cash flow. Uh, that's what it is um, because the way it works is anybody who is not a U.S. citizen, um, the IRS doesn't want to chase people all over the world for their taxes. Okay, so anybody who lives in the U.S., they you know they have to file a, a tax return in any case every year, and uh, they're on the radar, and you know they you know there are other ways to uh, to reach them and to catch them and to do all that all that kind of stuff. But people who don't step foot in the U.S. and they have investments and they have income from U.S. source, the IRS wants to make sure that they're going to get their tax. So therefore, there's um, there's this concept called withholding in which the U.S. person who's transferring funds to uh, a non-U.S. person is required to set aside a certain percentage of taxes and send that to the IRS on behalf of the foreign person. Okay, and um, sometimes that, um, that amount of tax by law is more than what the foreign person will have to really pay in the U.S., and uh, the only way to get back the difference is to file a tax return at the end of the year. Um, so this way, the IRS uh, makes sure that they get their tax because they're taking even more than what they need temporarily. And, um, and once a year, the, um, the individual, the investor, the foreign person uh, will file a tax return and get back from the IRS um, any extra taxes that they were withheld from them. So, so let's just say, and, and I, I love that example. So thanks a lot. So because withholding is something that is the obligation of the of the person or the operator or the syndicator that is based in the United States that they mm -hmm. that they must that it's an obligation, right? And so basically saying that if you have a and I'm just making up numbers, everybody, don't worry. We're just making up numbers. It's just to give the idea of what what Kenneth is talking about, just so you understand. So let's say you have you invest in a syndication. That syndication, um, or you have a property, and that property returns, I don't know, three percent. Right. And so that 3% is what you are going to return on the property. At the same time, you may have a withholding, meaning the person in the United States on that particular asset has to withhold 20%. And so I'm, I'm using extreme examples here, right? It, it, so they have to withhold 20%, but you're supposed to make 3%. And so the idea is, is that the IRS says, okay, as long as you go to your, if you do your filing, you may actually find that you had a, because of depreciation or something like that, it was a negative return. And you will be able to keep the 3%. But the whole point is you have to go through the exercise of declaring your taxes in the United States. Is that, would that be accurate or what would you, what would you change in that example? That is very good. The only thing I would change is the, the, the point that you mentioned about depreciation is uh, that the depreciation happens on the partnership level, not, not on the, the individual level. So the depreciation could actually lower the, the, the taxable income um, even um, and, and there won't be withholding because the withholding is calculated on the profits after depreciation. Um, so, so that that specific uh, example um, wasn't um, 100 percent accurate, but the idea is true. Um, that we're talking about, you know, like rental income, you know, uh, you know, on the on a regular basis. But what what your example is more relevant for is um, is withholding when it comes to FERPTA. And I don't know if you heard that. So, yep. so uh, let's let, let's stop there because this this 10 to 15 percent that affects many people that are, you know, depending on if you're a million dollars or over. I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But since you talked about it, it's something that I see all the time. It's something we talk about all the time. But for those people that are not familiar with FERPTA, can you tell us what it is and how that can impact someone as well? Absolutely. So FERPTA is a law from 1980, I think. Yep. And uh, it... Um, Basically, basically says that when when a foreign person is selling uh, their real estate, okay, when they're selling the real estate, then the U.S. or not even the U.S. the buyer, the buyer has to withhold from that foreign person 
um, from that foreign seller, um, usually 15%, I'll just keep it simple, 15% of not of the profits, but of the sales price. Okay, the sales price. So that's that's gonna be a lot, a lot more tax than than you know the profits. If you take a um, you know, a, a simple example, if if you're selling, if you bought a property for eighty thousand dollars and you're selling it now for 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 a hundred thousand dollars, you have a profit of only twenty thousand dollars, but you have to withhold the, the the buyer the buyer has to withhold um fifteen percent of a hundred thousand dollars, meaning uh fifteen Fifteen thousand dollars out of twenty thousand dollars profit. That's that's a lot more than what you know what what, what he's really supposed to pay. Um, so there's going to be a lot of um, a lot a lot of uh, a lot of taxes he's going to have to get back. Um, Why does FERPTA and, exist? Why does FERPTA exist? Oh, it's the same reason as you know the withholding in general. The IRS doesn't want to chase people um, all over the world, so they have a they have a handle on the U.S. person or the person who is. Um, who is um, who is buying the the U.S. real estate, and they say, "Okay, I want you to make sure that don't give don't give them the entire hundred thousand dollars now. Okay, just give them eighty five thousand dollars. Give me fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, because I want to make sure I, I the IRS want to make sure that I get uh, that I get my due taxes. And um, and if it's too much, then you know they'll come back later and they'll file a tax return and they'll get it back." Awesome. So once again, it's about being able to go th- about having the obligation to go through the tax declaration, right? And then afterwards, there's a there is the um, well, depending on how the numbers work out, you could get that money back, or you could get some of that money back, or you may have to pay a little bit. But the the whole point is, and you won't really know until you go through the declaration process, which is why the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, doesn't want to chase people all over the globe, which was. Fantastic. There's one other thing that you mentioned before, Kenneth. I appreciate you helping to educate us once again because you're, well, you're helping us to feel much more comfortable and confident and, you know, so we can invest beyond our backyard, especially for those people outside of the United States that want to invest in the United States as foreigners. Another thing that people talk about all the time is, well, man, you know what? But I live in country X and in the United States, they're going to tax me and then they're going to tax me for what I make in my own country. So there's this whole thing of double taxation. Like, I don't want to pay taxes twice like what is that all about so if for someone who's never heard of double taxation and some of the different treaties that exist what does double taxation mean and then also can you kind of help some people feel a little bit good because there are some treaties that help to actually treat this exact same this exact thing yeah absolutely and even without a treaty there there when it comes to real estate it's uh it's usually it's usually okay um so just taking a step back the way it works in in most countries, most countries tax tax their residents on their worldwide income. Okay, so if you're living in Israel, okay, and um, and you have income in the U.S., then Israel will also want to tax you on that U.S. income because you're a resident of Israel and you have to report your worldwide income. Okay, on the other hand. You have income from a U.S. source. It's in real estate is in the U.S. So even though you're not a U.S. resident, since the the property is in the U.S., so the U.S. also wants tax. So in theory, you have a situation where you have two different countries that that claim that they want tax on the same income. So in theory, there could be double taxation, meaning you'll pay whatever. 10% in one country and another 10% in the other country, and you'll end up paying 20% instead of just 10% once. Um, the good news is um, that there, there are tax treaties. And um, like I said, even sometimes without tax treaties, there are internal laws that um, that allow for foreign tax credits, Okay, which means that if you pay tax in one country, then you can get credit in the other country for the tax that you paid and you won't and you won't pay double tax you'll just pay you'll just pay the higher amount for example if in if in Israel the the tax rate is 12% and in the US it's 10% just examples not real numbers okay so if you pay 10% in the US you won't pay another 12% in Israel you just pay another 2% to get to the 12% that's that's in Israel and it's, what the treaty does essentially is is it tells you who has the first right of taxation which country gets the money first 
Okay, because you can say, okay, if I pay 12% in Israel, then the US won't get anything, right? But that's that's not that's not fair to the US because especially here we're talking about real estate. And when it comes to real estate, it's uh, it's attached to the to the land, to the so you know, when it's on US soil or wherever the real estate is physically, that's the country that has the first right of taxation when it comes to real estate. Every different type of income has different um, different status. Um, so for real estate, the U.S. will get the first right of taxation. If there's anything left over, then the the foreign country will will get that, but it won't be double taxation. Generally, well, there yeah, are generally, ways. Yeah. yeah, there there are other ways uh, to get stuck with double taxation, and that's and that's you know when when there are different ways to calculate. Um, different kinds of, um, of, of of tax tax methods, such as depreciation and 1031 exchanges. If there are certain tax deferral methods or certain tax um, um, certain tax um, calculation methods in the U.S. Um, that the foreign country does not honor, so when they calculate the tax in the foreign country, they won't get that tax benefit, and they'll end up paying more. Um, all together. Um, so I think that's a little more, you know, probably have to break that down a little, but, um, but well, there are know, scenarios where if you're not careful, um, you definitely could get stuck with double taxation. That's why it's important to speak to a professional to yeah, make that's sure you don't get, you don't get to those situations. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. So I, cause I, and I know as we mentioned in the beginning, like, we're sharing ideas because what we want you to be able to do, and Kenneth, you're helping us a lot by especially talking to us about some of the different terminologies that I'm super familiar with because I hear about it all the all the time, and and you're very familiar with. There, this is very helpful for so many people who either are foreigners or are interested in it, and they're just now starting to find out more about different ways they can do it. But the real important thing is being able to reach out to a professional and talk about your specific situation. And so when you have a professional like Kenneth, who is working with people from literally all over the world that have the same interest that you do, which is in U.S. based real assets, then it's a great way for you to pick up the phone, go to his website and be able to reach out to him and say, look, Kenneth, I've got this specific situation. I live in country X. I'm interested in the United States investing and I want to do this, this and this. And you're doing that in advance, not after the fact, which means that Kenneth can actually sit down and help you devise a strategy that is going to be. Uh, much more tax efficient. So, you know, before we get into the um, the going long final three, Kenneth, just on that, like, talk to us about who is the who is the person that you're typically helping today, um, and just so you you can give the going long family a better idea of who those people are that they're like, hey, listen, I've really enjoyed this conversation. This has been really cool, but I don't know if he really works with people like me. Who is the person that you're working with today? Oh, that's uh, definitely working with you. <laughs> the answer is yes. No, no. no. Um, there, there are definitely two um, two categories here. There's the there are the U.S. people, the U.S. operators that need help with the um, with with their foreign investors. Okay, and you know, in terms of calculating the the withholding um, and and understanding what their obligations are, and to make sure to do it right. And obviously, they're the foreign uh, foreign investors and the foreign syndicators or whatever you want to call them the operators um that uh, that deal with the with the foreign investors individuals okay we're talking about individuals or businesses there are also sometimes you know businesses companies that uh, that also um take you know their corporate uh, earnings and invest it directly in the US it doesn't have to be an individual um you know but anybody that's uh, that's starting out um or already involved in uh, in in U.S. real estate, after the fact, it's never too late um, to get into compliance. There you go. No, that's perfect. So that helps us to understand. So really, th those that are operators helping um, those individuals that are foreigners in investing in the United States, and then those foreigners that are outside of the United States wanting to get involved, and they probably start talking about things like Regulation S when they're doing different types of uh, uh, of um, of pooling of funds and things like that. And Kenneth can help you understand like what are some of those implications. Reg S stuff is really SEC, so we're not going to get into that. But it's more of the the tax the the tax uh, implications of those kinds of things. So thanks for helping us get clear on that, Kenneth. And I'm sure you're helping a lot of other people, but we got to get into the going long final three. And the thing is, I never ask anybody the going long final three unless you tell me that you're ready for me to ask you. So Kenneth, are you ready? 
I guess I have to say yes. I don't know. I'm afraid yeah. to say no. Yes, exactly. yes I'm ready. Say, yes. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Fantastic. So listen, so we started, um, well, we started actually on this side of the pond and we're going to stay on this side of the pond <laughs> today because would love to know what your favorite European city is, either that you visited or still on your bucket list to visit. Okay. It's interesting because I'm not a big traveler, so I don't have that many places that I can choose from. There's one Everybody's place got a I, bucket list, man. <laughs> no, 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 not bucket list. I want to choose a place that I was, that I saw that I was actually there. I was in a place in, uh, in, 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 uh, in the UK in England called Newcastle, Pontine. I was there for a few days. My wife had a course there. I was there for, you know, for a weekend and it was, you know, a really nice little community over there and, uh, um, you know, a cool thing. So, that was, that was, you know, I'll say Newcastle. Newcastle. Okay, right on. So we got to vote for Newcastle. I think that's the first one. Awesome. Newcastle's on the map. So um, All right. fantastic. Appreciate that. Then listen, the second thing is what I'm going to... Like one of the things I noticed about really successful people, Kenneth, is that all successful people have something that's very similar and that every single successful person has only made one mistake. And that's the real reason that they're... <clears throat> Okay, I get this wrong all the time. And so I guess I, I just get ahead of myself, but okay, all joking aside. So the thing is, all successful people, like everybody makes mistakes. We all make mistakes all the time or learning opportunities or however you want to say it. But the, the difference is those people that are successful really take away the lessons from these mistakes, uh, learning opportunities or whatever. So what is the one lesson that you've made? Like maybe you made that mistake or you had that learning opportunity, but that one lesson that you want to share with, with the going long family today, that's really going to help them avoid making the exact same mistake and really help them get on the, on the fast track faster. Okay. Well, whenever I think about a mistake, I go back many years to when I was like 11 or 12 years old. That's, it, it just still rings in my head. And, um, I think the, uh, the main, the main lesson in, in one word is don't be selfish. <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't think we have time to tell the whole story, but there was a, there was a time I was in little league and um, I thought about myself instead of the team and I regretted it immediately. And that's something that sticks with me. Um, you know, you can't just, you know, think about yourself. We don't live in a bubble. Um, you know, we live in a world with other people. So if you're not selfish, you think about other people, then, um, then that's the way you're also going to be able to grow yourself and uh and thrive love it man don't be selfish and yeah we'll have to pick up on that little league story at a, at a different time but uh oh, yeah. appreciate you sharing that and then lastly man we always want to fill everyone's brain or give them the option to fill their brain with knowledge so what is the one book that you would recommend to the going long family uh, i think it's the book that i'm gonna write <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm gonna write a book i'm telling you I'm, i keep telling myself i want to write a book about funny experiences with clients but uh who knows maybe it'll happen i'm, I'm actually not a big book person if I have trouble falling asleep, I'll read a book. It works like a charm. Um, but um, I, re I read a lot. I do read a lot, just not books. I read plenty of articles online, research tax laws when I need to. So my own real recommendation, if you want to you know, put this down, I don't know if anybody else chose this book before, is the Bible. The Bible. It's you know, the bestseller it's and it's full of life lessons. You don't yeah, need you know any what? other book. It's amazing how many how many people have selected the Bible. And so we're going to add that into your show notes again. Um, we will, we will, we will, we get that frequently actually. Oh, so, you do. Okay. Yeah, we do. Well, you we see, do. it's we a do. bestseller. I told yeah, you. It, it is a best. <laughs> it's definitely a bestseller. It's definitely a bestseller. <laughs> so listen, man. So I'm, I'm just thinking from our conversation, right? I'm thinking about how much you, you've known that you love detail and you, we, we kind of joked a little bit about uh, you being able to find earrings and that patience and that persistence. And then you went down the audit trail and then you went from the audit and then you started getting into tax and then international tax. And I know we talked about it before. And then that really U S based tax. And then you've, you, you know, you made a life decision. You left uh, Brooklyn, you went to, uh, went to, went to Israel and you've continued to really focus on helping others that have a need in the marketplace, which was really to more, know more about us based real assets, right. Or real estate. And so as you continue to go out and continue to educate and help people understand things like withholding and, and double taxation and FERPTA and all these kinds of things, like I'm sure that there are so many people that are thinking to themselves, okay. And he even works with customers like, or clients like me, they're thinking, Kenneth, how do I get in touch with you, man? They, like, keep, tell me how I find out more about you. So what's the best way for the going long family to find out more about you, Kenneth, what you do and uh, what you're doing at Kastner Tax Solutions? The best way is to find me on LinkedIn. Just search my name. I I like to be active on LinkedIn, but even if not, you know, there's uh, 
you'll be able to find me and DM me over there. You can email me directly, kennethdkastner at gmail.com. You can also go onto my website, kastnertaxsolutions.com. And um, they're, those are the three best ways to find me and to contact me directly. And I'm happy to help anybody who wants to ask me any questions. All right. Fantastic. And yes, you are, um, you are on fire over at LinkedIn. And, and one of the things I would ask going along family, as you reach out to Kenneth, when you do that, right. Cause I'm recommending that all of you reach out to Kenneth and just explode his inbox, um, that, Go you, for it. that you definitely let him know that you were listening to him here on the going along podcast, because that's going to help Kenneth just to make sure that he can know, okay, well, you guys were hanging out with Billy and da da da. And so he knows the conversation and that's going to help you also too, to make a better connection with them. So definitely pick him Absolutely. up, on, pick him up on, on his recommendation. And that's what, I mean, Kenneth and I are on touch by LinkedIn as well. And that's one of the reasons that he is here today. So, um, so do that. And Kenneth, listen, man, I just want to say thank you very much for investing your time with me and the entire going along family today. Thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. We've got to do this again. Yeah, sounds great, man. Sounds <laughs> great. And listen, Kenneth, if you give me just a couple seconds, I just want to say but like the last words to the Go Along family. Sure. Um, listen, Go Along family, thank you so much for investing your time with Kenneth and I today. And listen, I mean, he left so much knowledge, very tactical knowledge that you can put into your overall strategy. He's made himself available. And, and, and the thing is, is this is a unique opportunity for you to really go out and make a positive impact on someone else's life. Someone needs to hear today's conversation. So just take your iPhone or take whatever phone you have and just share today's episode with two or three other people that you know that, that Ken is, what he's talked about today can really help them. That way you can be the person of influence who's also helping other people and definitely will help to attract other people to the Go Along family. And that's one of the things we wanted to continue to do is build and grow our community and our family with other like-minded people. At the same time, I am going to ask you if you if you have your phone or whatever, leave us an honest review. Like I ask for an honest review because this is something that really also helps us. What did you like about today's message? What would you like to hear more about? Because that's something we can share with Kenneth as well. Uh, and for me, I go through every single one of the reviews and I want to continue to make this podcast and video cast even better for you. So definitely take just a couple seconds, literally honest review. Really, really, really appreciate that. And then lastly, I'm really looking forward to welcoming you back on the very next conversation. So until then, go out and make it a great day. And thank you very much. Wow, don't you love hearing from top-notch experts in the field? You know, when I was getting started, I really wish that I would have had access to such experts. And even more, I wish they would have given me like a really simple list of things to follow so that I could have gotten to my goals much faster and been much happier even sooner. So that's why I've created for you the seven things that you should avoid in order to be successful in long distance investing. And you can pick that up really easily by going to billykeels.com forward slash seven things to avoid. And also, if you liked today's episode, don't forget to leave a five star review. I'm looking forward to seeing you on our very next episode. So go out and make it a great day.